Hello and welcome back. This is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today for our third episode of Counter Talk, we are going to be talking about the recent event that took place in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Wagner County, uh, where a homeowner and his son defended themselves with an AR-15 against three home invaders, uh, who subsequently were all killed during the home invasion, the three invaders were. The uh, homeowner and his son, who uh, fired the shots from the AR-15, uh, were not harmed at all. There are three reasons why this is important. The first is media coverage and the use of an AR-15 in self-defense. Second is the use of an AR-15 in self-defense in general. And third is a castle doctrine and the stand your ground laws as they apply to this case. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into this and we'll get started. So I'm going to read this from CNN uh, and we're picking CNN as a news source for a reason which I'll get into in a minute. I'll go ahead and just go over what happened if you're not familiar with this event. So, three teenagers dressed in black and wearing masks and gloves were killed by a resident when they broke into a home in Oklahoma, authorities said Monday. A fourth suspect, the alleged getaway driver, now faces first-degree murder charge counts and their deaths, authorities said. The 23-year-old son of the homeowner fired the fatal shots from an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle. Uh, officials said one, uh, one suspect had a knife, the other uh, had a set of brass knuckles. Uh, primary investigation looks like self-defense, said the, the Wagner County Sheriff's deputy. Uh, the shooter voluntarily spoke with investigators. Neither he nor his father were hurt. The deceased suspects were 16, 17, and 19 years old. A 21-year-old woman, who was the uh, alleged getaway driver, turned herself into Broken Arrow Police shortly after the shooting. Elizabeth Rodriguez was arrested on three counts of first-degree murder, one count of first-degree burglary, and one count of second-degree burglary. Burg blah, blah, burglary. So shortly before 12 uh, Monday, the suspects broke in through a door in the rear of the home. The young man who was there with his father encountered them. There was a short exchange of words and then gunfire happened. Two of the suspects were in the kitchen and the other was found in the driveway. Uh, the homeowner's family is saddened that their son had to take three lives. Okay, so that's basically what happened, and let's get into this. So, let's start off by focusing on the firearm that was used for self-defense in this scenario, which was an AR-15. Now, CNN does call it in this article an AR-15 semi-automatic rifle. When I first read the news report yesterday, they had just stated rifle, and that kind of opened up a can of worms, and I was going to get into that, but I did see a... Uh, article that was released today where they've kind of re gone a little bit over uh, more into detail and they did say AR-15 semi-automatic rifle. That's still interesting because if we do go back to 2013 uh, uh, when the Navy Yard shooting did happen, I wanted to compare the reporting of this scenario with the reporting of a scenario of a mass shooting, uh, in which case uh, again we're focusing on the Naval Yard shooting in 2013. If we look here in the title and CNN's reporting, it does say Navy Yard shooting, AR-15 back in the news. So, again, right now we're focusing on the rifle, whereas in the defensive scenario, the AR-15 was mentioned more as an afterthought, as a tiny little detail that was kind of thrown in there. Um, and again, they softened up the term by saying AR-15 semi-automatic rifle. So let's go ahead and get into the article here. It starts off with, it has been called the most popular rifle in America. So we're starting off the, uh, the news coverage of this mass shooting of this tragedy with the AR-15 as the main focal point. And it briefly returned to the spotlight after Monday's shooting at the Navy Yard, the AR-15, again. A U.S. law enforcement official said Monday that the gunman Aaron Alexis unleashed a barrage of bullets using an AR-15, a rifle, and a semi-automatic handgun. So, Again, he used a, an AR-15, comma, a rifle, comma, and a semi-automatic handgun. Okay, so uh, you see a little bit of the differentiation there. First of all, they separated the fact that the AR-15 is a rifle. So an AR-15, a rifle, and then a semi-automatic handgun, not a semi-automatic rifle like it is in this defensive coverage. Authorities believe the AR-15 was used for most of the shooting. The official said, I don't know why that matters. The news prompted Senator Dianne Feinstein, one of the strongest proponents to ban assault weapons like the AR-15, so now it's an assault weapon, to issue a statement. So we're obviously getting into this, uh, this terrible tragedy and we're, we're not even talking about the tragedy, we're talking about the firearm. So now as you can see, we're, we're talking about a tragedy and we're getting off on a tangent about the AR-15 and how it's an assault weapon and spraying bullets and everything, and I will leave a link to this in the description. 
But if we go back to the discussion of the home invasion, the AR-15, again, is mentioned as a semi-automatic rifle. It's uh, very much downplayed into the fact that this was actually used in self-defense, and it wasn't used for malice or, or bad intent or used in a tragedy. So, in this case, they focus more on the events that actually happened, which is actually what they should do, as instead of on the firearm. If the roles were reversed, however, and this 23-year-old uh, self-defender had taken his AR-15 into a public setting and used it to shoot the same three intruders in cold blood in a more of a tragedy scenario, of course, um, this reporting would be way different. Back to the CNN article of the Navy Yard shooting, it then goes on to list all the other places that AR-15s have been used in tragedies, listing Sandy Hook, Aurora, Portland, Santa Monica, and uh, then it's basically that's where it stops. Um, since in the coverage of this Oklahoma shooting, it didn't go on to list other instances where AR-15s have been used in self-defense, I'll go ahead and list those for you. So, I do have a list here. I, again, I will leave a link to this list in the description. So, if we can all remember the 15-year-old boy from Texas who defended himself and his 12-year-old sister from home invaders by using his father's AR-15. Um, again, see a store owner uses an AR-15 to fight off multiple suspects who drove a vehicle into his store. Um, and I'm not going to go too much into the details. Again, this link will be here. You can go and read it. Let's keep going. A private security guard uses an AR-15 to stop a violent armed robbery being carried out by multiple suspects, and it was all caught on video. And there's a list of even events where homeowners have, just by having an AR-15, stopped the home invasion without firing any shots. Another example of an AR-15 being used in New York to defend a homeowner against multiple assailants. Anyway, the list goes on. So. Um, point there was basically the coverage of this. Now let's really get into the story and the tactical use of the AR-15 in home defense. And I love this story. Um, I'm not happy that anybody was killed. Nobody's happy for that. Um, these three people broke into a home. The homeowners were prepared, they were armed, and they defended themselves. And uh, so far in the reporting that this only just happened two days ago, there is no uh, indication by law enforcement that this was a bad shoot and that they were not uh, justified in their actions in defending themselves, and I don't think that they are going to find that uh, given the set of circumstances that have been provided so far. Um, but being a, a store owner, and I get this question all the time, and the purpose of Counter Talk, why I do this, is to kind of get into the, instead of the gun reviews that we do, um, to talk about the other political issues or other issues that people come in and just want to chat about. And another one I get all the time from people coming in, and this is from gun owners too, is they look at AR-15s on our wall and they say, why does anybody need to own that? What are the purposes? And I give them the usual spiel, you know, it's a great three gun weapon, people uh, enjoy them for competition, people just like to collect and shoot for fun. Um, great uh, end of the world scenario type of thing, and I'm not really a conspiracy theorist, but it does have its place there, and I won't fault it for that. Um, the other thing is for self-defense, home defense, and I usually get a lot of people rolling their eyes at me when I say that, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. And in this scenario, and as well as other scenarios that I've just listed out, the common theme here is multiple invaders. Had this uh, individual, this 23-year-old, had a handgun, maybe a Glock 19 or a SIG 226, something with a 15 to 17 round capacity, uh, some automatic 9mm or 40 or 45. Uh, sure, the results could have ended up roughly the same, but they may have been worse. For example, what if one of these three invaders had a handgun themselves? Uh, what if one of them had uh, an AR-15? Now, not very likely. Uh, most home invaders probably won't be going into a home carrying an AR-15. Uh, as it you know weighs more, it's bigger, uh, reduces their uh, ability to carry out you know the things that they're stealing there to steal. Um, but as somebody defending themselves, um, if he was matched, he's already outnumbered. It didn't mention anything about his father being armed or firing shots. Uh, he has an AR-15. He likely had a 30-round magazine. Again, those details aren't in here. Uh, state of Oklahoma doesn't have any magazine button laws or magazine restriction laws or anything like that. Um, I know that because actually I am originally from Tulsa, Oklahoma, so this kind of has an interesting connection that I find, you know, this is where I'm from. But if he's, if he's there with his AR-15 by himself against 
uh, three people who were armed. One of them had a knife, one of them had brass knuckles. Um, if one of them had had a firearm, um, his chances of being able to overpower the attackers was still greater because he had an AR-15 and not a handgun. So this is a classic example of why an AR-15 is a legitimate option for home defense because when we're getting into and, and to these more and more uh, brazen types of home invasion scenarios, you do find groups of people um, attacking and robbing, and you, you find this uh, in these like rioting scenarios that are happening now around the country, and these mob types of mentalities. Uh, store owners are getting their stores broken into by multiple people, and again, and, and tying into that scenario, and scenario the LA riots with the Korean family who were able to defend their shop because they had, I believe, AK-47s and Mini 14s, something like that, some higher capacity, higher than a 10-round capacity rifle, uh, like an AR-15. Um, so this is a this is a classic example, and um, I mean I give you know kudos to the homeowners. They were prepared. Uh, they were over to overpower their assailants, and they both walked away from it. And you know the real tragedy would have been if they were found at home. And again, these people were armed, and they had to have known that there was a likelihood that they would have run into homeowners being there when they were trying to rob the house. Otherwise, why would they have a knife and brass knuckles? Right. So now let's get into the stand your ground laws that are basically protecting these homeowners uh, from being uh, prosecuted for any wrongdoing. Uh, in the state of Oklahoma and there are other states around the country, I know the state of Indiana, uh, where we are now, has the same types of uh, laws, allows a person while they're in their own home to defend themselves if they believe they themselves or any other bystanders are in direct threat of harm or even death to themselves or other people, uh, innocent people in the scenario. In this case, given the information we have, they were totally justified in taking the lives of these three intruders, uh, who by the way, two were juveniles and one was an adult, um, and, and they were totally justified. Uh, you can't fault them for shooting them. And had these uh, invaders decided not to rob people, they would still have their lives. So I can't feel bad for them. Um, and it's unfortunate that they are gone. I'm sure their families are grieving, and it's never a good scenario. Uh, not only for them, but for the person who had to shoot them. And it even says in the article, the family is grieving because this 23-year-old, this uh, young person, had to rightfully defend himself and his father, but in doing so took the lives of three other people. And I don't care who you are, and there's always this talk like, oh, I would, you know, you know, I hear it in the gun store all the time, you know, oh, I have no problem shooting this person for that or shooting that person for that, you know, of course, legally, if I had to defend myself, and I wouldn't either. But no matter how justified you are, you are going to have to live with the fact that you did kill people. And uh, there are not very many people who aren't maybe a sociopathic who aren't going to feel uh, bad about that. And, you know, it's not going to stay with them. So there it is. I hope I didn't ramble too much. I just wanted to go over the overview there. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please subscribe. Uh, thank you for stopping by. Again, this is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. We will see you next time.